Tom Barker and his attorney Mike Buckley arrived here at the sheriff's office in the basement of the Dallas County Courthouse just after 9 o'clock this morning. I spoke briefly with Barker, asked him how he was doing. That, he said, is about to be debated. Promptly at 9.30, both men entered the glassed-in office of Sheriff Clarence Jones for a closed-door conference which lasted less than half an hour. At one point, Barker shrugged his shoulders, reached into his jacket pocket, and removed his badge and ID. He handed them first to his attorney, then to the sheriff. In an interview with Channel 8's Judy Hanna yesterday, the sheriff had first mentioned that Barker would be suspended without pay. The handing over of the badge made it formal. Barker told me later he had not heard anything about the entire incident until the early news last night on Channel 8. It is my opinion after reviewing the testimony before the uh, Dallas County Grand Jury, as far as that testimony is concerned, I have arrived at the conclusion that no member of the district attorney's staff, including at that time Buddy Irwin, who was chief prosecutor, ever directly questioned my client as to any statement made by Mr. Landis. In addition to this, in reviewing the tapes of the Landis trial last week, the district attorney office, in particular Mr. John Sparling, did not at any time during direct examination of Deputy Barker refer to or inquire about any statements made by Mr. Landis at the time of his arrest. District Attorney Henry Wade had issued a formal memorandum to his assistants last Friday saying that he did not consider Barker's testimony believable and that he would not prosecute any future cases dependent upon Barker's testimony. Sheriff Jones and First Assistant DA Doug Mulder have discussed several times whether there had in fact been contradiction in Barker's testimony before the grand jury and before the trial jury. I talked with the DA this morning, asked what he viewed as the next development. That's up to somebody besides me, he said. I don't care what Jones and Mulder decide about the testimony. I won't use Barker as a witness again in the next hundred years, period, paragraph. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Dallas County Sheriff's Office. When the issue of formation of the Tarrant County Junior College came before the voters in 1965, only 18,000 people let their wishes be known. They voted approval by a two-to-one margin. 
TCJC Chancellor Joe B. Rushing said today he is hopeful of a large turnout of voters tomorrow because he feels the school has the confidence of the people. Some 233,000 voters are qualified to cast ballots, but only 34 did so in the absentee vote ended Friday. At stake in the election will be the proposed second phase expansion of the existing South and Northeast campuses and construction of the proposed Northwest campus on Marine Creek Lake near Meacham Field. Members of the TCJC Board of Trustees have assured voters that passage of the bond program will not cause a tax increase. School officials predict that by 1975, more than 19,000 students will be enrolled in college credit courses. Polls will open tomorrow from 7 to 7. This is Jerry Park, Channel 8 News, on the move, on the south campus of Tarrant County Junior College, Fort Worth. This is the old Carver School Complex of the Garland Independent School District. It's been closed for almost a year now, and the Garland Independent School District would truly like to have it off their hands. They want to sell. There's a new organization in Garland called the Garland Way. It's nonprofit. They want to take over this facility, buy it, and operate it on a lease basis, nonprofit, to other organizations like Head Start, which is cramping its current quarters nearby. We talked to an organizer of the Garland Way, Mrs. Dorothy Shaw. We're forming this organization, Nonprofit Corporation. Our main purpose now is to buy the Carver School facility, which our Garland Independent School District is going to dispose of as surplus property. We are hoping to use it as a human resources development center to help Garland people who need help. How have your negotiations with the uh, school district gone thus far? In other words, are you uh, in line to buy this facility? We are. Uh, negotiating with them. They are aware of our interest and several of the board members, school board members, have expressed great interest in this type of operation. How much do you figure is going to cost you uh, to get started the Garland Way? Uh, we're looking to raise an initial $10,000 cash. And you'll do what with this money? This will be down payment on a building and uh, operating expenses to start us. Where do you anticipate getting the money? From the community, businesses, industries, private individuals who feel that this is a worthwhile endeavor. Now this Carver School is a, is a fairly large facility. Uh, how many organizations would you see leasing it to? Well this is uh, in the future. We're, we're going to be the gradual utilization we feel uh, as groups present oh. themselves. Mm -hmm. for are we talking about community groups or government agencies or just what are we talking about for tenants? Uh, any kind of uh, human resources development which would include many groups. Mm -hmm. uh, Head Start would be a possible tenant, which is daycare, daycare preschool children. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for some kind of job training program. Envision this. Uh, youth Corps, a youth council, youth center type uh, program. So if Mrs. Shaw and her friends can raise, say, eight or $10,000 to get this project underway, then certainly the Garland Way may become the way for other communities to make use of discarded school facilities. In Garland, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, I tell you, Vern, it's like this. Uh, for one thing, the enthusiasm is here. Uh, the people are, are, seem to be well organized. The coaches, they are pointing out a lot of different things to a situation uh, kind of uh, things. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's a new year. 
when you talk about the enthusiasm, are you talking about an, an open, expressed enthusiasm or just something you see in, in practice, perhaps? Well, it's uh, something that I see in practice for one thing, but uh, it's just like the other day, I, I was, uh, well, I'm not in shape yet, so I'm out there looking more or less, and uh, the ball went up uh, on the backboards, and it went up about five or six times, and each time, every one of the big men were up there after the ball. So this is it's, it's just expressed in this, this kind of a fashion. Don, are you optimistic? Now, Tom says that uh, he thinks it's going to be rebuilding uh, this year. Are you optimistic in terms of thinking of a championship, or will you be satisfied just to improve the quality of the ball club? Well, uh, we t I like to take, you know, as the, as the coach, what I assume, first things first. Naturally, we're going to have to play together, work together, but this ball club is definitely going to be improved. And uh, uh, I might be putting myself or somebody on the spot, but I, I can't see any other way. Uh, then going up and uh, I'm thinking in terms of a championship. Uh, I see all the potential here Everything is the ingredients is here and uh, I just like to be a part of it. You know, I'm ready to play ball He told Miss Faye uh, that it was a stick-up. He said, get the money. And you, you lay down. And did you comply with that? Yes, I did. Did he say anything else to you? No, he didn't. He told me to get over there and lay down and not to move. So I did. How long did he tell you to stay there? Told me to stay about five minutes. And did you stay the five minutes? Yes, I did. And what, what did you do after the robber left? I laid there what I thought to be about five minutes. And Mrs. Major say, Florine, has he gone? I say, I don't know. I'm afraid to look. So we can, I continued on lay there. So by the time we thought he was gone, and then I came out and went to the grocery store.
I was counting this front window, or checking the front window, and this man came in with a gun and asked where the manager was. I told him that uh, I didn't say anything at first. It startled me, and, I, and he said, I said, where is the manager? And I told him that he had gone to lunch, and he said he wanted the money, and I started gathering it up. Did he come to the bank with the gun exposed? Yes, it was. When he came in the door, he had the gun in his hand. Was there any doubt in your mind as to uh, whether he meant business or not? Did you fear for your life at any time? Well, he meant business. 